Scholars. So we're going to continue to talk about Charlotte's Web and character perspective. I know Miss McKinney has a new environment. Do you like it? Good. So let's start off talking about character perspective. We know that character perspective is what a character thinks or believes to be true about another character, the conflict, or a moment in the text. And when you're looking for evidence, just like we've been doing, you need to ask yourself, what did the character do? What did the character say? And how does the character feel? We know at the beginning of the story, in chapter one, it talks about Fern's perspective and her father's perspective about killing the runt or the baby pig of the litter. Then in chapter two, it talks about how Fern felt about Wilbur going to the farm. Then in chapter three and chapter four, it talks about Wilbur being in the farm and his perspective and how he feels and the other animal's perspective. We know that Wilbur was bored and then he ended up getting out of the pen. Then he didn't know if he could live outside of the pen because it was very scary for him and he was still really so young. And we know from chapter four that the animals do not want to be his friend right now. Say, oh, no. Right. So, scholars, today we're going to continue doing our big ideas on character perspective and finding our text evidence. We're going to talk about how Wilbur feels. What is he thinking? And remember, he found a new friend. Now, let's see who his new friend is. We're going to read chapter five today. So, you're going to turn your Charlotte Webb book to chapter five. Remember scholars, you can pause this video at any time in case Ms. McKinney is going too fast. Going to chapter five so you can follow along. We've gotten so far in the book already. Here we go, chapter five, Charlotte. The night seemed long. Wilbur's stomach was empty and his mind was full. And when your stomach is empty and your mind is full, it's always hard to sleep. A dozen times during the night, Wilbur woke up and stared into the blackness, listening to the sounds and trying to figure out what time it was. A barn is never perfectly quiet, even at midnight. There's usually something stirring. The first time he woke, he heard Templeton gnawing a hole in the grain bin. We know that Templeton is the rat. Templeton's teeth scraped loudly against the wood and made a quite and made quite a racket. That crazy rat thought Wilbur. Why does he have to stay up all night grinding his clashers and destroying people's property? Why can't he go to sleep like any decent animal? The second time Wilbur woke up, he heard Goose turning her nest and chuckling to herself. What time is it? Wilbur whispered Wilbur to Goose. Probably, probably, probably a high about half past 11, said Goose. Why don't you sleep, Wilbur? Too many things on my mind, said Wilbur. Well, said the goose, that's not my trouble. I have nothing on my mind at all. I've had too many things under, I have too many things under my behind. Have you ever tried to sleep while sitting on eight eggs? No, replied Wilbur. I suppose it is uncomfortable. How long does it take a goose, to, a goose egg to hatch? Approximately, approximately 30 days, all told answered the goose, but I cheat a little. On warm afternoons, I just put a little straw over the eggs and go out for a walk. Wilbur yawned and went back to sleep. In his dreams, he heard again the voice saying, I'll be a friend to you. Go to sleep. You'll see me in the morning. About a half an hour before dawn, Wilbur woke up and listened. The barn was dark. The sheep lay motionless. Even the goose was quiet. Overhead on the main floor, nothing stirred. The cows were resting. The horses dozed. Templeton had quit work and gone off somewhere on an errand. 
The only sound was a light scraping noise from the rooftop where the weather vane swung back and forth. Wilbur loved the barn when it was like this, calm and quiet, waiting for light. Day is almost here, he thought. Through a small window, a faint gleam appeared. Uh-oh, let's see what's going to happen. One by one, the stars went out. Wilbur could see the goose a few feet away. She sat with head, she sat with head tongue under a wing. Then he could see the sheep and the lambs. The sky lightened. Oh, beautiful day. It is here at last. Today I shall find my friend. Wilbur looked everywhere, searched his pen thoroughly. He examined the window ledge, stared, started up, stared up at the ceiling. But he saw nothing new. Finally, he decided he would have to speak up. He hated to break the lovely stillness of dawn by using his voice, but he couldn't think of any other way to locate the mysterious new friend who was nowhere to be seen. So Wilbert cleared his throat. <clears throat> Attention, please, he said in a loud, firm voice. Will the party who addressed me at bedtime last night kindly make himself or herself known by giving an appropriate sign or signal? Hmm. I see that... Uh, Wilbur is looking for his new friend that called him in the night. The sheep looked at each other in disgust. Stop your nonsense, Wilbur, said the oldest sheep. If you have a new friend here, you're probably disturbing his rest. And quickly, it's the quickest way to spoil a friendship is to wake someone up in the morning before he is ready. How can you be sure your friend is an early riser? I beg everyone's pardon, whispered Wilbur. I didn't mean to be objectable. I didn't mean to be objectionable. He lay down meekly in, a, in the manure facing the door. He did not know it, but his friend was very near. And the old sheep was right. The friend was asleep. Soon Lurvy appeared with slops for breakfast. Wilbur rushed out, ate everything in a hurry, and licked the through. The sheep moved down the lane, and the gander wandered waddled along behind him pulling grass and then just as Wilbur was sitting down for his morning nap he heard again a thin voice that had addressed him the night before salutations said the voice Wilbur jumped to his feet salu what he said where what are they and where are you screamed Wilbur please please tell me where you are and what are salutations salutations are greetings said the voice when I say salutations, it's just a fancy way of saying hello or good morning. Actually, it's a silly expression. And I am surprised that I use it at all. Hmm. Let's stop and think about our big idea really quickly. The big idea says Wilbur feels excited to meet a new friend. He thinks Charlotte is beautiful. Let's see where we can find some text evidence. I am surprised that I use it at all. As for my whereabouts, that's easy. Look up here in the corner of the doorway. Here I am. Look, I'm waving. If you take a picture, if you take a look at this picture here, there is Charlotte. Can you guess what Charlotte is? Mmm. Thinking about the title of the book, Charlotte's Web, Charlotte is going to be a, oh yeah, let's keep reading. At last, Wilbur saw the creature that had spoken to him in such a kindly way. Stretched across the upper part of the doorway is a big spider web, and hanging from the top of the web, head down, was a large gray spider. Hmm, I think I found my first piece of evidence. Wilbur feels excited to meet a new friend. I found some text evidence on page 36. Make sure you follow along. And you're writing the text evidence, page 36. At last, Wilbur saw the creature. Remember, you can pause the video if I'm moving too fast. That had spoken to him. Don't forget your quotation marks. In such 
a kindly way. Good, put your quotation marks. Make sure you're still following along. She was about the size of a gun gumdrop. She had eight legs and she was waving one of them at Wilbur in a friendly greeting. See me now, she asked. Oh, yes, indeed, said Wilbur. Yes, indeed. How are you? Good morning. Salutations. Very pleased to meet you. What is your name, please? May I have your name? My name, said the spider, is Charlotte. Charlotte what, said Wilbur eagerly. Charlotte A. Cavica. But some just call me Charlotte. I think you're beautiful. Uh-oh, I found another piece of evidence. Big idea, evidence. Here it is, it says, he thinks Charlotte is beautiful. Here's my next piece of evidence on page 37. I'm gonna make sure that I put my quotation marks and look right in the book for my evidence. I think you're beautiful. Said Wilbur. Those are our two pieces of evidence for our first big idea. Wilbur feels excited that he's meeting his new friend, and he thinks that Charlotte is beautiful. Now we need to think about our next big idea, but let's keep reading first. Well, I am pretty, replied Charlotte. There's no denying that. Almost all spiders are rather nice looking. I'm not as flashy as some, but I'll do. I wish I could see you, Wilbur, as clearly as you can see me. Why can't you, asked the pig. I'm right here. Yes, but I'm slightly nearsighted, replied Charlotte. <clears throat> I've always been dreadfully nearsighted. It's good in some ways, but not so good in others. Watch me wrap up this fly. A fly that had been crawling along Wilbur's throat had flown up and blundered into the lower part of Charlotte's web and was tangled in the sticky threads. The fly was beating its wings furiously, trying to break loose and free itself. I know when something is stuck in a spider web, it's really, really sticky and it's really hard for insects to come out of the spider web. First, said Charlotte, I dive at him. She plunged head first toward the fly, and as she dropped, a tiny silken thread unwound from her end. Next, I wrapped him up. <clears throat> She grabbed the fly, then threw a few jets of silk around it. It rolled over and over, wrapping it so it couldn't move. Let's look at our next big idea. It says, Wilbur feels horrified watching Charlotte kill the fly. He thinks that she is violent. Let's see if we can find some text evidence as we read. Wilbur watched in horror. Uh-oh, I found my first piece of evidence that talks about how Wilbur feels while he's watching Charlotte kill the fly. This is on page 38. Make sure that you put the page number and put your quotation marks. Wilbur watched in horror Here's my first piece of evidence. He could hardly believe what he was seeing. Although he detested flies, that means he doesn't like them. He was sorry for this one. There, said Charlotte. Now I knock him out. So he'll be more comfortable. She bit the fly. He can't feel a thing now, she remarked. He'll make a perfect breakfast for me. Whoa, so scholars, I'm seeing that Wilbur feels very uncomfortable or really scared that Charlotte is killing a fly. But... Looking at Charlotte's perspective, Charlotte eats flies. That is how she lives. She eats the insects that get trapped in her web. Let's keep reading. You mean you eat flies, gasped Wilbur? Certainly. Flies, bugs, grasshoppers, choice beetles, moths, butterflies, tasty cockroaches, gnats, midges, daddy long legs, centipedes, mosquitoes, crickets, Anything that is careless enough to get caught in my web. 
I have to live, don't I? Why, yes, of course, said Wilbur. Do they taste good? Delicious, of course. I don't really eat them. I drink them. Drink their blood. I love blood, said Charlotte. And her pleasant, thin voice grew even thinner and more pleasant. Don't say that, gro groaned Wilbur. Please don't say things like that. Uh-oh, I found my next piece of evidence that talks about how Wilbur is feeling horrified and he thinks that she is violent. So I'm going to put on page 39, Wilbur said, don't say that. Please don't say things like that. Those are my two pieces of evidence that match my big idea about how Wilbur feels about Charlotte killing insects. Now, for the last part, you're going to find that text evidence yourself. That's going to be in your activity on Seesaw, but we are going to finish chapter five first. <clears throat> Why not? It's true, and I have to say what is true. I am not entirely happy about my diet of flies and bugs. But it's the only way I'm made. A spider has to pick up a living somehow or another, and I happen to be a trapper. I just naturally build a web and trap flies and other insects. My mother was a trapper before me. Her mother was a trapper before her. All of our family have been trappers. Way back for thousands and thousands of years, we have spiders. We spiders have been laying fly for flies and bugs. It's a miserable, it's a miserable inheritance, said Wilbur gloomily. He was sad because his new friend was so bloodthirsty. Yes, it is, agreed Charlotte, but I can't help it. I don't know how the first spider in the early days of the world happened to think of this fancy idea of spinning a web, but she did, and it was clever of her too. And since then, all of us spiders have had to work and in the same trick and it's not a bad pitch on the whole it's cruel replied wilbur who did not intend to be argued out of his position well you can't talk said charlotte you have your meals brought to you in a pail nobody feeds me i have to get my own living i live by my wits i have to be sharp and clever lest i go hungry I have to think things out, catch what I can, take what comes, and it just so happened, my friend, that what comes is flies and insects and bugs. And furthermore, said Charlotte, shaking one of her legs, do you realize if I don't catch bugs and eat them, bugs would increase and multiply and get numerous, and they destroy the earth and wipe everything out? Well, so Charlotte is saying that she is killing lots of insects so she can eat, but she is also making sure that there aren't too many bugs in the earth. Really, said Wilbur, I wouldn't want that to happen. Perhaps your web is a good thing after all. Hmm. The goose had been listening to this conversation and chuckling to himself. <clears throat> there are lots of things that Wilbur doesn't know about life, she thought. He's really a very little innocent pig. He doesn't know what's going to happen to him around Christmas time. He has no idea that Mr. Zuckerman and Lurvy are plotting to kill him. And the goose raised herself a bit and poked her eggs a little further under so that they would receive full heat from her warm body and her soft feathers. So scholars, the goose reveals some important information about the conflict. The goose thinks that uh, Wilbur has no idea that Mr. Zuckerman is planning to kill Wilbur for Christmas to eat some ham. Mmm. I think that's very important information that we need to remember. Good. Let's keep reading. Charlotte stood quietly over the fly, preparing to eat it. Wilbur lay down and closed his eyes. He was tired from his wakeful night and from the excitement of meeting someone for the first time. A breeze brought him the smell of clover, the sweet-smelling world beyond his fence. Well, he thought, I've got... 
a new friend, all right. But what a gamble friendship is. Charlotte is fierce, brutal, scheming, bloodthirsty. Everything I don't like. How can I learn to like her? Even though she's pretty and, of course, clever. Wilbur was merely suffering the doubts and fears that often go with finding a new friend. In good time, he was to discover that she was mistaken about that he was mistaken about Charlotte. Underneath her rather bold and cruel exterior, she had a kind heart, and she was to prove loyal and true to the very end. Well, so the very end of the chapter gives me more information about Charlotte. It says underneath her bold and cruel exterior, she has a kind heart. So I can't wait to see what Wilbur's perspective is going to be of Charlotte in chapter six. So scholars, for your big idea, you're going to find text evidence about Wilbur's perspective. He feels conflicted about Charlotte. He wants a new friend, but he doesn't know if he can like someone that kills flies so or kills insects. So I need you to go inside of chapter five, Charlotte's Web, and find your text evidence that talks about how Wilbur is conflicted, whether he wants to be Charlotte's friend or he does not want to be her friend.